let's look at this headline. A young woman survives multiple murder attempts by her stepmother, and the stepmother dies after being forced to dance into burning hot iron shoes. Gruesome, right? Truly terrible. I'm a passionate guy, and I love mythology and fairy tales. But when I talk to people about fairy tales and the deeper meaning, the hidden messages in them, I hear my friends and sometimes people say, hidden messages, deeper meaning? Now fairy tales have deeper meaning? Oh Lord, Simon, what is next? We're gonna wear Birkenstock, stand in a circle, hold hands and sing Kumbaya? Take them for what they are. They're just funny little stories that we tell our kids when they go to bed, okay? Don't read into them, into them too much. Funny little stories. Look at this, is this funny? Would you tell a six-year-old this story? We do, and most of you do. Because this is actually the story of Snow White. And it's not so much about being killed by your stepmother, as it is about passing on the gift of beauty from the older generation to the next generation. And as anyone knows here who's a little older, and when you look at yourself and you start to lose some hair and there's an extra wrinkle, sometimes you're not ready to pass on that gift. They don't deserve that yet, the next generation. I want to hold on to it. Lord knows there are mornings that I look at myself in the mirror and I want that mirror to say, Simon, you're still the fairest of them all. <laughs> but you can't. We must pass it on. We must face our own mortality because if we don't, we will burn just like the evil queen in this story. And she could be wearing Gucci, but she'll still be burning. <laughs> now, why would our ancestors convey these deep, hard-found life lessons and weave them into stories in religion, in mythology, and yes, into folk and fairy tales. Why would they do that? Why not simply tell us the facts? Because any good educator, any good marketer knows that we as people understand lessons much better when they are exaggerated. We remember the point better, and nothing exaggerates more than fairy tales. Good people are very good, and bad people are truly bad. Killing your own daughter, right? Fairy tales tap into the unconscious mind, and that is why they're so powerful and motivating. These are the stories that are remembered. Now, our children live on Childhood Island, and it is a great island. But one day they must leave that island. They must build their own boat, and they must set sail on the ocean of life. It's inevitable. One day you wake up and say, a Barbie is just a Barbie. Playmobil is just Playmobil. But where do they go on their boat? Where is paradise? And how do I get there? And what is the role of our parents? Will we be a safe harbor? Will they be able to build their ship and repair it and get it stronger before they set out on the ocean again? Or will we be a harbor that they would rather avoid? A critical harbor that points out the weaknesses in their ship. When you face the inevitable disaster that will come in your life, the inevitable adversity in your life, what you will have left is nothing but the character that you've built for yourself when times were good. And fairy tales can help you navigate these storms and can help you build your ship. And once your ship becomes stronger and stronger, you realize that adversity and these problems that you see coming at you are opportunities not to blame others and to be the victim, but to look at them and say, I am going to be the, my best self. I'm not going to be the worst of myself. Now, I come home and I find my daughter crying in a room. And I think, it's not these girls again. Please, Lord, let it not be. And I ask her, why are you crying, Laura? And she goes, Dad, I can't do it anymore. I cannot be the monster anymore. They always want me to be the monster. But I want to be a ballerina too. I want to be a princess. But they say, I have to be the monster. I have to be Shrek and chase them. Now, you see, my daughter looks a little different than most of the girls in my class. And in fact, my youngest son does too. This is my youngest daughter. And these are our four children. Dad, she continues, I want to join my friend club at recess, but they say I can't join them because I have brown skin anyway. What do you do? Now, I wanted to show my worst self. I wanted to go to school and beat them up so bad. <laughs> but I can beat up 10 people. I can beat up 100. I can beat up maybe 1,000. But I cannot change the world. The world is the way the world is. So I had to give this little girl tools. What do we do? I thought back to when I was young. 
And when I grew up in a poor mining town in the Netherlands, and I would escape reality by listening to fairy tales, hours on end, and I would get a glimpse of what the good life could be. And I thought about this, and I started reading her fairy tale. And I didn't do so lightly. I utterly and honestly believed that that was the best thing that I could do for her. I started reading her the fairy tale of the ugly little duckling. Now, by all means, she, is, she, ain't, she ain't no ugly girl. She is beautiful, smart, and daddy's little princess. But she identified with the ugly little duckling. And she realized that the ugly little duckling stayed nice to the other ducklings, even though they were teasing her, ridiculing her, and bull bullying her. But she became the most beautiful swan of them all. And all the other ducklings, they grew up and they became ordinary little ducks gossiping away in their own little town. She loved it. She still loves it. To this day, most nights, we read fairy tales together and we meditate together. And we calm down. And what does Laura want most of all of these stories? What do we all want from these stories? Let's look at Laura. She wrote a book report about Annie at school, and I thought she kept it so beautiful, I just had to film it. So let's look at it. Hey, Laura, why did you like the book Annie? Reason one, I was adopted too. <clears throat> Reason two, it had a happy ending. Three, Annie looks a lot like me. that awesome? Listen, we all want the same from our heroes. One, we want them to look like us. Two, we want to identify with their struggles. And three, we want life to end well, a happy ending. I thought she captured it perfectly. Now, fairy tales not only help children, they also help adults. They help me. And one of the best examples I could give here is the story of Hansel and Gretel. Because most of us in this audience, most of us in the world will face adversity at one point in our time, and we will get lost in these woods, as you see here, and we will go towards the House of Candy. Now, the House of Candy stands for temptation, the wrong answer to the problem, the wrong solutions. You cannot buy, you cannot drink, you cannot do enough drugs to get out of a problem. That is the wrong, that is showing your worst self. Real truths are revealed to us as jewels. And those are not real jewels. That's an opening of your mind, a realization of a part of your brain that you thought you never had before. And what emerges is a more complete self, a more mature self. One of the most difficult things I had to go through during the last three years is that my father was diagnosed with ALS, Lou Gehrig disease, this stupid ice bucket challenge. He, uh, he died after seven months after being diagnosed. <clears throat> so, what did I do? I went to the house of candy. I started drinking. And it helped. But if you stay there long enough, the witch will devour you, will eat you alive, just as she did, almost did with Hansel and Gretel. But after a while, I thought, is this what my dad wanted for me? Is this what he truly thought that this was the, the answer for me? And he was the best dad, by the way. And I thought, there must be something. I'm going to walk out of these woods with jewels. And I got to tell you, here's the three jewels that I found walking out of the woods and leaving the house of temptation. One, life is so short. In a hundred years, we'll all be dead. So enjoy. Don't sweat the little stuff. I really learned from that experience. That's a jewel. That's an opening of my mind. Said it a hundred times, I finally realized it was true. Two, spend more time with your family and friends. And three, my dad used to love to write, but he never wrote me a letter. What I meant to him, or was there a lesson, what I should do now that he, that he was gone? Was there one more life lesson he taught me? So what did I do? I don't blame him at all, by the way. I really don't, but it was just something that I wished I would have. And what did I do? I wrote a letter to all of my children individually, and I wrote a letter to my wife, what they mean to me, and I hope it will help their grieving should I pass. The moral of this TEDx talk is do not be led into temptation by the house of candy crush that we all keep playing. <laughs>
Put away your phone. I see people having dinner. It could be your last dinner with your friends and family. Put away those phones. Talk to each other. Have real interaction. Meditate. Read an old-fashioned book as we do. We play board games with the kids. Stop at the TV. Enough commercials. I hope you will be a safe harbor and continue to be a safe harbor for your family and friends where they can come refuel, where they feel better after they set out again. And I hope that you stay on the course and you go for the right, you aim for the right goal. And my daughter, she'll be just fine. Laura? I love you. Thank you, Laura. Laura, Laura, would you like to end this TEDx talk with a fairy tale ending? Yes. <laughs> you are a child of the universe no less than the trees and stars. You have a right to be here. And whether or not it is clear to you, no doubt the universe is un unfolding as it should. With all its sham, drudgery, and broken dreams, it is still a beautiful world. Be cheerful. Strive to be happy. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.